our tale begins in a dark and treacherous world. Mutiny has overcome every element of humanity. Dry land has lost as the people who once roamed its desolate surface. What's left of the living beings remaining have taken to the high seas, awash in their selfish ways. Piracy and pillaging are rampant among the surviving seafaring vagabonds as they desperately search for land without hope of ever finding any. The infamous Captain Maraud was the leader of the nastiest gang of pirates there ever was. His ship, the Dove's Demise, was overrun with dastardly and terrifying scallywags, known for desecrating any vessel that dared come their way. The loosely run crew of Corsage had overrun many a vessel, both military and marauder alike. Any seafarer in their right mind knew to stay clear of the waters of the Arethia, where the accursed ship sailed. Though many a greedy merchant had fallen into a trap of an easy route to the trade waters. Tales tell that not one had escaped the heinous grasp of the company aboard the accursed ship. Amongst the despair and aimlessness afloat the waters, one glimmering fleet stands out among the rest. The legendary Fleet Admiral Elon leads his conglomerate of noble navy ships determinedly toward the edge of eternity, a place beyond the mutiny of this lost world. The Admiral's eye runs to and fro, searching for wandering ships in need of a superior directive, wanting that none should perish in their mutiny, but all join his glorious course for what lies beyond their worldly pursuits. In a fleet where noblemen abound, our story takes us to the lowly swabby Yeoman Jones. Though he served the great Admiral Elon faithfully and continuously for many years, he had never once been in his presence. That is, until one fateful day when an order came for Jones to join the Admiral on the flagship to receive a new directive. As honored as he was timid, Jones was soon transferred to the head ship. Greetings, Yeoman. I've been waiting for you, said the Admiral. I've come to receive orders, sir, Jones dutifully replied. There is a ship in need of direction. Despite the misdeeds and wrongdoing of their long-lived piracy, the Dove's demise still has time to turn from their ways and join our fleet. I want you to go to them and tell them that I can save them from their wandering and despair. Tell them of the hope that lies beyond the edge of the world and that all they have to do to reach it is to give up their ways and follow me. Though Jones had always feared and respected the commands of the Great Admiral, he couldn't begin to imagine what would happen if he attempted to persuade the pirates. Even if he were to escape the treacherous fate of so many before him, would the Admiral really want those belligerent buccaneers to join his fleet? It wasn't too hard to decide which would be worse. Jones would rather be marooned, blunderbust, cutlass, and cannonballed, then see those unforgivable outcasts reaching the edge of eternity with Elon and his crew. Since Jones did not command a ship of his own, the expectation was to find a merchant ship reckless enough to attempt a voyage through the treacherous Erethian waters. For a price, of course. He knew that any crew foolhardy enough to agree to take him to Maraud would find no issue in aiding him in his disobedience of the Admiral. He hailed the nearest merchant transport and bid the Admiral adieu. As soon as Jones boarded the tradesman's ship, he bribed the privateers to change their course and escape as far from the fleet or the pirates as they could imagine. The greedy merchants quickly conceded, relieved to reroute their voyage. They set sail through uncharted waters, quibbling about where to go. 
none knowing which way might bring them further from their wandering. Before their course could be determined, waters crashed fiercely around them. The tough old sea dogs tightened the ropes, manned the sails, prepared for a storm. Little did they know that something much more sinister was causing tumultuous tremors of the sea. Just as the fierceness of the waves began to overtake the ship, tentacles reared starboard and stern, the helm enveloped in suctioned limbs. <laughs> cried the men as Jones trembled below the mast. They knew that when they set forth that these waters were uncharted for a reason. Disobeying Fleet Admiral's orders always resulted in the calamity of the one who dared evade the path set before him. It's me at once! Jones quivered. Silence fell over the ship as a terrifying limb wrapped around the yeoman, taking him overboard before he could fight back. Darkness plunged around him as the Navy man was cast into the contemptible creature of the deep. Darkness engulfed him for what seemed the better part of an eternity. Amidst the depths of the Kraken, Jones wondered what would have happened if he had listened to the Admiral. Could his fate have been worse than this? While he wasted away in the darkness of his thoughts, his hands wrapped around the cold frame of a metallic shape. Great, he thought to himself. A compass. What better place than your own deathbed to know where you're going? Three days and three nights he remained pondering his fate below the waves in the digestive track of the cephalopod. He had resolved to die a lily-livered mutineer, but he didn't dream that it would happened so slowly or so slimy. Suddenly, cold waters engulfed him all at once. The light of the stormy sky came into view, and a life buoy encircled his floating form. With no other option in sight, he was brought aboard the Dove's demise. As Yeoman claimed consciousness, he found himself being brought to the very place he had attempted to evade in the first place. Captain Murad's Orders. After all the atrocious stories he had heard about the dastardly pirates, why have they saved him? Were they human after all? Perhaps Admiral Elon was right to believe there was hope in their salvation. Confused and intrigued at his sudden and mysterious appearance among the waves, the rowdy crewmen gathered around Jones to hear his tale, overcome with relief at a new life and newfound convictions of the importance of obedience. He shared his report of the Kraken's journey and told them all about the fleet that sought a true destination. Beyond the aimless wandering of their selfish seafaring lives, the carousing crew quieted and attuned their hearts to the good news of the Navy man. To Yeoman's surprise, Murad and his men sought immediately to turn from their lives of piracy and mutiny and implored Jones earnestly how they could find Elon and his fleet. The Yeoman revealed the compass he had found in the belly of the beast, knowing the needle would make clear the course of the Admiral. Jones had not believed that the hearts of the pirates could be turned. He was more astonished at the willingness of the thieves to turn from their ways that he was at the miraculous journey that had brought him to them. As Murad and his men set sail where the compass had directed, Jones began to wish he had been consumed by the Kraken after all, rather than seeing the marooning maggots be joined with the Honorable Admiral's great fleet. To Jones's displeasure, the voyage to find Elon was swift and successful. When the pirates joined forces with the Great Navy, they submitted to the Admiral and all he had in store for them. They were welcomed with open arms and joined the forces of the fleet as if they had always been a part. Jones took company with Elon, dismayed with the mercy bestowed upon the murderous crew 
that he thought deserved destruction. Do you do well to be angry? The Admiral calmly asked. Jones looked across the horizon and considered all the wrongs he had done in the course of his life. Was he any better than a pirate? Did he deserve the destiny at the edge of eternity either? If the Admiral accepted such scum as himself and allowed him to be a part of the fleet with honor, who was he to think of the pirates as any different from himself? He pondered such things in his heart. Elon continued on his patient journey enlarging his fleet as they set sail towards the edge of eternity. So, what will you do? Wander awash in your selfish ways? Or die to self and set sail toward mutiny's end?